Hey everyone, my name is Nick and welcome back to the channel. I notice a lot of people posting online asking for help on how to fix the annoying top layer print lines on their 3D prints. So I decided it was perfect time to go over the cool feature in Bamboo Studio Slicer software called ironing. This tool helps you get super smooth matte finishes on the top layer of your prints, making your project look professional and polished. I'll be doing a series of multiple ironing settings, combination test prints, and sharing the results of my findings. This will give you a comprehensive understanding of how to achieve the best finish on your 3D prints. So grab a cold one and let's have some fun. The first thing I would like to do is show you what my plan is for this video. I'll be testing various ironing settings on both square and flat surfaces in two sizes first. Then we'll take those results and move on to some real world tests. I'll then use the ironing feature on these simple text badges that I created, then move on to using the ironing feature on the Bam Bam Print logo. All right, let's go ahead and go over the ironing feature. First, make sure that you have the advanced settings turned on. This will enable the ironing feature in the quality tab. The ironing feature has multiple options, ironing type, pattern, speed, flow, and line spacing. Let's quickly go over them and familiarize ourselves. Ironing type determines where the ironing is applied. The options include all top surfaces, the topmost surface only, and all solid layers. In the ironing pattern, you can choose between rectilinear, straight lines, or concentric, circular patterns. The ironing speed controls the speed of which the nozzle moves during the ironing. The slower speeds generally produce better results. Ironing flow adjusts the amount of filament extruded during ironing. Lower flow rates prevent over extrusion. Ironing line spacing sets the distance between each pass of the nozzle. Smaller spacing results in a finer finish. For the first ironing test, I'll be using these square flattened objects. I'm going to turn off the ironing for the first set of squares. The second will use the rectilinear pattern and the third set will use the concentric pattern. I'm using two different object sizes to see if we get any varied results. For the second test, I'll follow the same as our first, except I'm using a flat circular object. The first set will be turned off, the second rectilinear, and the third concentric. Test number three will follow the last two steps and print one without ironing, and the other two with rectilinear and concentric patterns added to all top surfaces. Lastly, I decided to do something more real world, and we're going to be printing the Bam Bam Print logo using the two ironing patterns, rectilinear and concentric. All right, so the first thing we need to do is set up all the ironing patterns for each of the models. First, make sure that you're in objects mode, then select your model, and then go over to the quality tab. And we're going to make sure that the first two models are set to no ironing. Next, we're going to set these two models to rectilinear. And the third are going to be concentric. Moving over to the circle models, we need to do the same thing. Make sure that the first models are set to no ironing. Second set are rectilinear. Third set, concentric. Now on the badges, we're going to do first model, no ironing. Second is rectilinear. And third is going to be concentric. Now in the Bam Bam Print logo, we're going to select the first model, rectilinear, second model, concentric. I also wanted to mention too that these locks are showing that the changes have been made to the objects. All right, let's go ahead and slice the first plate. Now first, before I send it to the printer, I wanted to show you that the ironing is showing up here in the line type summary. And you can see these two right here that have the ironing, which is the rectilinear and the concentric are orange because they have the ironing pattern set to them. The first two models don't have an ironing pattern and that's why they are in red. You can also see that there is going to be 22 minutes and 43 seconds of ironing or 31% of the print time being added to these objects here. All right, let's go ahead and send it to the printer. All right, now that the first plate is being sent to the printer, I'm going to go ahead and send the second plate to my second P1S. And you can see in the preview mode, the first set of the circles is set to no ironing. The second set is set rectilinear. And the third set is set to concentric. We have a 17 minutes and 51 seconds or 30% print time added to the print. All right, I went ahead and made the additional changes to the badges and the logo models. Everything is sent to the printer and we'll go ahead and check out the results when they're done. So the prints are done and the results are in. Here are the results of our first test of the square models. The no ironing models, both small and large, yielded the same results. As you can see, the top layer shows print lines. 
Not a lot, but it's definitely noticeable without having to look hard. Our rectilinear pattern for both small and large has a significantly less noticeable top surface print lines. I can definitely still see them when the light hits them just right, but it's definitely an improvement. I think some minor adjustments to the line spacing from a 0.15 to a 0.10, we could definitely reduce this even more. Our concentric pattern failed me for this particular shape. It gives off a pyramid type of pattern that can be seen almost immediately. Once I shine it into the light, it's even more apparent. I had a feeling that the concentric pattern would not be a good test for this, simply because it's a circular pattern on a square model. Moving on to our flat circular disc models, we get similar results to our square models with no ironing. Obvious print lines on the top surfaces are easily noticeable. For the rectilinear and concentric patterns, I was actually surprised by the results. Looking at both rectilinear and concentric patterns on the circular models, I was expecting the concentric to give me better results thinking that the circular ironing pattern would follow the model perfectly. But as you see when I show you a comparison of both side by side, the rectilinear pattern still gives me a better result over the concentric. Now could all these results change if I was to make adjustments to the ironing options? Maybe we'll just have to find out. Alright, next up are the Bam Bam print badges. For this test, it was quite easy to spot the clear winner. The no ironing still had the same results as the previous two tests, of course. But for the rectilinear and the concentric, I had my money on the concentric. I really thought that because of the irregular shape of the badges and text that the concentric pattern would shine in this test. But because of the way the slicer created the circular patterns around the text, it kept creating divots on the flat base surface in multiple places. As you can see when I run through the G-code, the ironing ends up creating a bunch of triangular shapes that end up creating those small divots. Now on the rectilinear test, it gave me almost a perfect flat surface across the entire badge on the base and on the text. I literally couldn't pick this one apart. You can see minimal print lines on the base and the text pattern is just about perfect. I really can't see any print lines on the text. I think with some minor optimizations of the ironing settings, we could see just about a perfect print here. For the 3D Bam Bam print logo, I ran into some issues for both the ironing patterns. The rectilinear pattern, I ran into some ironing issues. In the stop sign circular area of the logo, there are some banding issues. They are also very visible because they show up glossy, unlike the rest of the ironing where it becomes a matte finish. I can even physically feel the banding with my fingernail if I scratch it. So there is definitely a clear issue here. Again, with some minor optimization tests, I think we could get some better results. Now just as I suspected what happened did. The concentric ironing pattern gave me similar results as it did for the badge. The circular ironing pattern left behind some very noticeable surface inconsistencies. I also noticed that the printer drugged the nozzle a little bit on the left side of the first beat in the logo. I can actually feel a small hole right here. To be fair though, this could be a small issue with my logo file that I used. This test definitely gives me some things to consider for the next set of tests. Since this is a basic ironing video, I would like to explore many different ways that I could improve my results in a more advanced video. Just off the top of my head, here's the list of features that I could bring into the set of tests. The obvious would be to adjust the ironing settings first. Next would be to turn on Z-Hop, which lifts the nozzle up when traveling. Another feature would be to add more top layers to give the printer more filament to work with when ironing the surface flat. So I would like to invite you to stay tuned as I will be working on an advanced ironing video with similar tests to this. If you have run into any additional features that have helped you improve your prints, I'd love to hear about them in the comments. Remember, if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, I would like to invite you so that you never miss out on all the content I put together. Also, if this video was helpful, leave a comment. I would love to hear from you. I always respond to my viewer comments. Again, my name is Nick. Have a great rest of your day and happy printing.